SwiftUI's Geometry Reader allows us to use its size and coordinates to affect the layout of its children. And it's the key to some really remarkable special effects with SwiftUI. Now when using these things, it's really important you keep in mind the three-step SwiftUI layout process. The parent proposes a size to the child. The child picks a size based on that information and the parent must respect that size then the parent positions a child however it can inside its coordinate space. Now in its most basic usage, Geometry Reader allows us to read the size that was proposed by the parent and use that to manipulate our view however we want to. For example, we could use Geometry Reader to make a text view that only uses 90% of the screen width. It said, hey, you can have all of it. You say, fine, I only want 90%. So we could say there is a Geometry Reader with geo coming in, more on that in a moment. Then our hello world text view with a frame width of geo.size.width times 0.9. So again, 90% of the available space. Then a background of dot red and end the geometry reader like that. And the layout you see perhaps is not what you expect, more on that in a moment. First one I mentioned is geo thing coming in. This is what's called a geometry proxy and it contains the parent's proposed size, how much space we can have, plus any safe area insets we want to read, and also a method for reading frame values that we'll look at in a moment. Now this strange layout, you can see first up, it is indeed 90% of the width, the last 10% is, is left blank, but it sort of puts it in a really strange position and this is an interesting side effect of using geometry readers that might catch you out at first. Uh, the view that gets sent back, this geometry reader here, has a flexible preferred size, which means it'll expand to take up more space as needed. Now you can see this in action really clearly if you put it inside a VStack and then put some more text below it. For example, if I had here a VStack, then our reader, and after the geometry reader had text, more text, text, in a background of dot blue, for example. Then it's pushed right to the very bottom of the view because this geometry reader here expands to fill all the remaining space. To see it in action more clearly, you can even add a background color to that reader. You could say, I want a background of green, for example, to make it really clear where it's expanding to, right near the bottom like that. Uh, now remember, this is a preferred size. It's not an absolute size. It's still flexible depending on the content around it. So if we had more text, more text, more text, more text, whatever, it would just shrink upwards to let that take up space instead. Now when it comes to reading the frame of view, of view this geometry proxy object here provides a frame in method rather than a simple properties. Uh, this is because the idea of a frame, you know, in includes X and Y coordinates. Where am I in X and Y position? But that doesn't make sense in isolation. Do you mean the absolute X and Y compared to the whole screen or just X and Y compared to my immediate parent or something else? And so if you Y calls these options coordinate spaces and those two in particular are important. The global namespace are our views relative to the whole screen and the local namespace measuring our views frame relative to its immediate parent. And you can also make custom ones. You can say, I want a custom space here with a coordinate space modifier, and therefore any children of that view can read its frame relative to the coordinate space. Now, to demonstrate how these things work, I'm gonna create some example views in various stacks and attach a custom coordinate space as well, and add an on-tap gesture of reading the X and Y coordinate space out globally locally and the custom coordinate space. You can see exactly how they vary. So first we'll say there is an outer view, type of view with var body, some view, has a V stack, then text top, a new inner view view we haven't made yet with a background of green and then text of bottom. Now we haven't made inner view yet, but that's okay, we'll do it in a second. Our inner view, is going to be struct inner view, another view with var body some view. This time it's a H stack with a text of left, then a text of right, 
And in between those two, I'm going to place a big geometry reader containing all our layout. So we'll say there is a geometry reader here with a geo coming in. Text of the center area will be there with a background of blue attached just to that text. Then a big old on tap gesture. This will print out various coordinates X and Y, global, local, and custom. So I'll say print our global center is geo.frameIn.global. That'll get us back the frame for this thing in the global coordinate space. And I'll ask for the mid X value like that. You're the middle X of this thing, a center position like that. And then I'll copy and paste that to do x mid y so we'll have x x y that mid times y that's our global one we'll then say i want to have the local center so we'll say in dot local and then dot local so that's relative to the parent and for the final one i'll say i want the custom center and this one we'll just use in the coordinate space named custom and use that here as well. So read the named coordinate space rather than global or local. And the whole geometry reader will have a background of dot orange that stands out clearly. And finally, in our content view down here, I'm gonna say we have our outer view, view with a background of red and a custom coordinate space named custom like that. Hopefully that code is more or less correct. It is good. I'll run it back now and hopefully you can get an idea of how our layout looks. So we have top, bottom, left, right, and this whole center area in the middle. When you press on the blue center, you'll get this thing printed out telling us what it all means in its exact coordinates. So this is where the background colors matter. The outer view has the background of red only visible in the top and bottom areas. That's because in our outer view struct, text top and text bottom have no custom background colors. They see the one from the parent view from, from outer view. It's applied to it down here, background red. The inner view, however, that has a background green. So you'll see green here on the left and the right. And it's visible there because the text left and text right don't have the going background colors again. So let's have the natural background color from the parent. The center area, this orange thing here, that's the geometry reader, colored in background orange. And a text center, this area here, that's the one with the blue background custom applied. So let's press it again so you can see it in the text here. Obviously the numbers you get will vary on the device you've chosen. I've got an iPhone 13 Pro here. So you can see my global center is 189.83 by 430.6. Uh, local is 152.1 or 0.2, depending on you ran up or not, by 351 or so, and custom is 189 or 190 or so, uh, by 384 or so, like that. So the sizes are mostly different. So hopefully you can get a sense of how these various frames work. And um, if you look at, in fact, honestly, the best way to understand these is just get the uh, values out of there into a, a thing you can measure more easily. So for example, if I go to like uh, copy screen, I'll get a little screenshot of that. And I can put it into Photoshop over here, like that. That's my raw uh, pixels now. Uh, this is an iPhone 13 Pro, which has a 3X screen. So if I look at the image size, it's 1170 by 2532. Uh, I've got to divide that to get points. So 1170 here, uh, 1170 divided by three gets me 390, that's the actual width of the screen. So I'll say, uh, bring this down to 390. And that's my correct screen size now, relative to the point system used by measurements. And so um, we'll see in here, if I look at Xcode again, I've got global center 189.83. So if I drag out a ruler, it'll measure out, and that's the absolute center there is 195. That's a bit left of the absolute center. It's like a fraction left of the real center is the center of our uh, geometry reader. And that's the case because uh, to the left and right is the words left and right. And right is a longer word 
than left. This, this box over here, this thing, is bigger than this box over here. And so the actual center of our orange area, of our geometry reader, is slightly off to the left, which is why the numbers aren't exactly in the center. Uh, and then it's 430.6 from the top. So if I look in again, uh, let's go into it more clearly, 430 is, uh, so here's 420. That's the dead center of the, of the image. It's lower than that, a fraction is like here or so. Um, and that's almost certainly because the red area at the top is bigger than the red area at the bottom. Um, there's just more safe area up there because you've got the clock and the Wi-Fi and battery and stuff versus just the home indicator. So there's more safe area at the top to account for those controls, hence why it's just fractionally lower there. Um, our local center, this thing is relative to its parent view. Um, so you've got to think about where its parent is and how it matters. So here you can see we have uh, 152 as its local center. That's the thing, the left edge of its direct container which everyone wraps around it. So it'll be indented slightly because it's now no longer factoring in um, the left and right areas. And this now also has uh, the direct container removed. So that's top and bottom have now gone to take that into account as well. So it's, it's much more careful in terms of its meaning. Just give me my direct owner. In this case, it will be uh, the interview here. And then for the custom space here, uh, that is the same uh, X value, but a different Y value. Um, again, think about how this thing is running edge to edge or not. Is it going to, uh, we've asked for the coordinates basically wrapped around out of view. Where does it lie? Are, does it take to the left or right or top or bottom or safe area or not? There's all sorts here. Um, and in this case, it's not going to extend into the safe area. Out of view uh, is limited really to this point up here it will not go into the safe area. And so we're seeing uh, the total value, which is 430.6 minus some safe area adjustment. So there's all sorts of different values being used here and they all matter. Uh, you're gonna want to have them at different times. Which one you choose depends on which question you're trying to answer. Do you want to know exactly where one view is on the screen? What's my exact location compared to the screen edges of my device? Fine, that's the global space. Do you want to know where this view is relative to its parent? Where in the parent am I? That's a local space. And sometimes you might want to say, well, um, I've got this whole complex layout and one view is here and one view is here, not my parent, a different view entirely in the same view hierarchy. Where am I relative to that? With a custom coordinate space. So they all matter and you know, what you don't want to do is try and hard code numbers and say, well, the safe area appears to be 40, 50 pixels high or whatever. Please don't do that. Read the value in and offset based on the geometry reader because that way you'll be sure it's flexible for whatever changes in the future.